sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see the troubles are all Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Tuesday night uh, e-learning. I appreciate everybody here. Uh, hi, Howard. Yes, uh, it will be recorded, and the recorder is running. Thank you. <laughs> uh, tonight, let's see, it's Tuesday, November 11th, and uh, we'll see about uh, see what we can do here this evening. We're going to look at some charts and a, a few things and try to answer a few questions. I want to again thank everybody, all the members for being here, and we have quite a few guests here. We have some folks here on two-week trials. I want to say thank you very much for being here. Uh, don't be bashful, and uh, well, let's just get started. Okay, uh, I've got the spy up here, and uh, <clears throat> I guess, well, you know, I any anyone would be, I if if you haven't realized that the bulls are in. Uh, in trial, I mean trial, I'm sorry I was reading that Jim, if you haven't realized that the Bulls have been in charge you've kind of missed the boat probably. Um, going forward I think that uh, the Bulls are still in charge but I, I also think we would be a little bit um, naive to think that we may not be, or, or naive to think that we may be just constant going up without any sort of pullback so I do think we ought to be prepared for that um, I, I'm not taking anything away from the Bulls at all they're definitely in charge they're definitely do their, doing their job but uh, like I say we just you, I think you'd be naive to think there's not some sort of pullback in the cards somewhere and rather than trying to predict when it's going to be, um, the what I would do is uh, follow the candlestick signals, and by following the candlestick signals, you'll notice when there's when there's maybe some sellers up here, uh, some sort of candlestick signal that might might give us a clue that the sellers, and that's what that's what that first candlestick signal is. It's a clue. It's a hint. Uh, it's the following candlestick signal, the follow through that tells us what's really going on. So un until that really happens, I'm going to stay bullish, but as we approach this upper line up here, which happens to be the trend line, uh, the top trend line here, as we approach, which you can see, we still have, uh, my goodness, we still have, you know, a good percent and a half or so uh, to it. So nothing saying the bulls can't move up here and, and crack through that and move higher, move, move their own way up to 210 or 215 um, just like I say we might be a little naive if we think it's just gonna last forever uh, yes sir Steve uh, it is being uh, it is being recorded so uh, let's take a look at IWM real quick IWM uh, IWM is still acting extremely well <clears throat> and IWM was the uh, I, I think IWM was the culprit to a lot of the pullback it led anyway so let's just blame it on it, uh, on that little little chart right there. Uh, but now it's come from the bottom and it's consolidated very well, and now starting to form a J hook. So, you know, a bullish J hook. So I'm I, I don't see anything here that suggests the bears are taking over. Uh, I think the bulls are still definitely in charge. Um, are we at a double top? Well, yeah, yeah, we are. Uh, what does that mean? Actually, a triple top, if you want to count that. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, you know, it just means we're at a triple top. Really, um, a whole not a whole lot more uh, than that right there. Um, it's just a door. And the door is not locked, but the door is there. And we have to see if the bulls are going to push that door open um, or... Can they not get through the door? So a double top is not a reason to not be buying. It's it's not a reason to necessarily be out of a position, but it does it does um, it does require a little bit of hmm. Maybe I better watch the candlesticks here, the price action, uh, just to see what happens. So uh, we'll be watching that. 
but right now the bulls are in charge because they are uh, trending up right now uh, Howard the recording I'll have it on the website sometime tomorrow it will be in the uh, because this is a public recording I'll be putting it in the public area uh, under tool under training and then uh, stock stock chat archive so if you look at the the tabs across the top you'll see training and then you'll see stock chat archive so it'll be up uh, tomorrow uh, up there okay and uh, probably around noonish I would say yeah somewhere I would say noons let's see Gary oh let's see Michael um, with these indices how much does the volume uh, reinforce your decision you know Mike I, I get asked that quite often and and uh, let's 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 bring up my volume bars just a little bit here so we can see them and uh, we can stay right here you know you know there there is a there there truly is a a reason to um, if you look at charting and you you read the charting books and I'm certainly not going to argue with this um, that as price moves up and if volume moves down that can't work out and I agree with that I agree that that um, it can't go on like this forever the thing of it is I find more of us in here are say short-term swing traders and a short-term swing trader let's just say two weeks or less okay I'm not talking about overnight or two days I'm so I'm talking two weeks or less so because of the way we trade and this is the way I think most of us trade here and there may be a few long-term traders in here but for the most part short-term swing traders what I have found is the chart continue to go up can continue to go up for days literally for days here's you know um, if we if if we go look at the spy and and that that will look a little better uh, as far as showing this you you can see where the spy has continued up and you can see where the volume has continued down so on one side I'm not arguing with the fact that price cannot continue to go up without volume that is true the question becomes at what point does price roll over and then is the is the is the rollover just a slight little pullback something like this so because of that volume doesn't mean that much to me it, it I don't pay attention to it uh, under, under these circumstances because I have it just, just like being uh, um, oversold or overbought I've seen stocks stay oversold for months I've seen stocks say overbought for months and say in the overbought condition they keep moving up but that's a signal or a sign that it's that it's about to take a dive but yet it still moves up and the same thing is true here price can go up until quite simply until price decides not to go up I think it does have something to do with volume the sixty-four thousand dollar question, though, is the timing of it, and that is the big question. So, how much does the volume influence or, or reinforce the decision? It it does not influence. I must use the word influence. It does not influence me that much. Uh, I certainly take note of it, but then again, more than taking note of the volume, I simply use a little bit of logic and. Uh, we can go look at the spy say crunched up like this and you can just like I say a little bit of logic here uh, the spy rallies and guess what it moves back it rallies um, it rallied a little more here then it moved back it rallies it moves back it rallies what's the next thing gonna happen here now I, I'm not saying the next thing is gonna happen tomorrow that's what the candlestick signals will tell us uh, here's what I will and you know guys like me we're not supposed to guarantee anything but here's something I'll guarantee you the stock market will not go up without pulling back volume uh, when does it happen it's a timing issue so that that's how I kinda look at that that
that volume thing, uh, price moving up and volume moving down. Hope that was helpful. Um, let's see. Uh, would you not need confirmation for some some sort to make the decision uh, to buy after the uh, double top? No. If I'm if I'm let's go back to IWM. I'm for instance right now I'm long. I'm I'm a bullish trader at this point. The double top or in this case triple top does not bother me because my primary uh, my primary decision is made because of the trend so let's do this let's go look at our naked chart over here uh, my primary decision is because of the trend so if I draw a trend line here and draw a trend line there that's what I'm looking at so my whole my whole trading is is from here to here to here to here uh, then it gaps up and pulls back and now it's just starting it, it it really hasn't set the world on fire but it's just starting so I'm gonna trade that trend when that trend breaks then that's when I will look at those those bearish concerns uh, I'll look at that but right now this trend is doing what all bullish trends do uh, you can put all bullish trends inside a channel and they will go from the bottom of that channel to the top to the bottom to the top to the bottom of course not exactly we know that not exactly uh, but you can see the road that it's taking right now and you can see how this road is starting to turn up a little bit and that's what I'm looking at you know staying within that trend right there um, as far as the double top, it does not concern me at all. Uh, it would, however, concern me if I was to see a candle like that. Then I would be concerned. But it's this signal right here that's concerning me, not, not the double top. Um, anyway, I, again, thanks for that question. Again, I hope that was helpful. Uh, let me see here. Um, do, 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 similar to July 2014, volume down in August, but prices continues up. Yeah, let's see here. So if we come over here in August, yeah, see how, see how, you know, August starts to slide and price continues to move. But once again, though, when you know, uh, what's important is you have to match your trading with your charts. So if 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 you're you know if you're following that volume moving down then you need to match it uh, you're trading with that uh, and I you know I think I'm fairly matched I mean I try to be uh, in a sense that okay I'm watching that yes I am um, but that's that's definitely that may be the top one of the top 10 things I'm watching but it is it is definitely below that 50 percent mark that's that's how that's how much I would give it right now uh, my number one thing is going to be the trend and then in that trend I wanna just a little logic here what goes up must come down and uh, we all know that everything has a pullback if we look at IWM right here this to me is a chart that's that that might if anything point to uh, a little bit of consolidation maybe uh, say not necessarily to that line but in this area uh, and then up uh, so this could turn out to be just sideways movement right here just like that uh, but again you know at, as of the close today there is nothing here that suggests uh, the bears are in charge now we could wake up tomorrow and that could be totally different the bears could definitely be in charge, but right now they're just not there. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at IWM. A lot of people follow IW. Whoops, IYT. Let's try that again. IYT. Uh, IYT is still moving up. Do we have a little bearish candle? Sure, we do. But then again, we had the same thing right here. Same thing. Well, same thing there. Same thing there. Same thing there. 
all that is is part of a continuation pattern it's just continuing up and we have little tiny inside days uh, price might move down just a little bit and then what that does it allows money to move in and price to start moving up of course tomorrow if we were to wake up and something like this would happen or or maybe maybe a little gap down a little gap down and then something like that that would make me very 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 nervous um, uh, that would make me very very nervous for a for a, a little bit of a pullback nothing nothing like this right here would suggest that we're gonna come uh, say all the way back to the 200 uh, what I would want to do is come up here and extend this line right here uh, straighten it out there we go I'd want to straighten that line right there and then watch it for uh, if it's gonna pull back watch what it happens what what happens about that area give or take a little bit right on that line are we gonna start seeing some buying signals are we gonna can see uh, continued selling uh, uh, to the downside uh, Steve is asking a pullback to the T line would be nice that would be sweet because you know the, the only way a, a bullish chart can move up is if it pulls back first and when it pulls back what happens is new money comes in recharges it and that moves it up until that money runs out then it pulls back new money runs in recharges it and then it moves up again so a pullback to the T line or even I mean ever so slightly below it you know if we if we saw something uh, 157 80 ish somewhere around there that would be fine too uh, just because it breaks below the T line doesn't mean the world's coming to an end uh, you know we do wanna uh, we do want to watch uh, support and resistance we do want to uh, take in consideration maybe some some fib lines I saw somebody mentioned fib lines up there you know you want to take all that in consideration uh, for a pullback one of my favorite uh, types of trading is a stock that moves up pulls back below the T line and then buy it on a bullish candle below the T line looking for that swing back up through it so a pullback even below it just slightly uh, would be perfectly fine uh, for me in, all the way down to this line right here so see 156 30 we'll call it 35 uh, down to there would be perfectly fine anything below that and I pretty much think it's a slam dunk we'll see the 50 but uh, above that I you know I bulls are still in charge or just in a pullback and as of today I think we're still in charge our bulls are in charge uh, cues there's nothing about the cues that suggests the the bears are in charge all we are doing is moving a little bit sideways here in fact if this was a uh, chart let's just say a ticker symbol that you would trade which you know, I mean, we can trade the cues too but if this was just simply a chart sorry I got a mess on here uh, what many people would be looking at uh, to trade here is there's a nice bullish run and then let's take a look at this trade right here let's just tighten that up man how many people would be trading that that chart pattern pattern right there uh, I can tell you a bunch of very good traders would be looking at that chart pattern to be long uh, based on the rally up and that kite and that tight consolidation here watching for that for that clue or that hint that we're ready to break out so they could get happily involved with that for that next move up so you'd have that wave one wave two wave three uh, right there so okay um, certainly don't want to spend our time uh, looking at uh, indices uh, tonight what I would like to do is look at a few charts that I think are are fairly good um, and then maybe we'll you know maybe you guys have a few we'll look at uh, and we'll just kind of go from there um, Tesla I think Tesla is uh, looking really good here uh, if you're looking to, to buy a $250 stock or maybe you trade options uh, uh, Tesla looks good now uh, over the 50 is what I would look at and I would use something just a, a close below the 50 is something to be out so you want a, a stop in there but I think Tesla moves up and 
you know, some good targets for Tesla would be around 265 and then on up somewhere around 285, 289, 290 up in there. And then, of course, you get you get into that breakout area. Uh, we're awfully close to 300 bucks. We really are. You know, if we can get to, uh, say, right there, 289, $300 is just a just a step away. Uh, that $300 magnet might pull price right in there if this thing can get going. So over the 50, I think, is a is an excellent trade uh, for Tesla. Uh, another one is uh, some people pointed out uh, in the trading room uh, today is this B. I like the way B's handling itself. Uh, nice little bullish engulf here. We've come back up. We've pulled back with this shooting star up here. Uh, we've got a tiny little. I say tiny because it's not. It's not much more than a bullish engulf. It just. It just ever so closely made a bullish engulf here, and it's back over the T line. Now, one thing with this stock, the the important number for it to beat, I think, is going to be this 1292. 1292. Uh, if it can take out 1292, then I think it has a good chance of taking this high out. But without 1292, it goes nowhere. It, it's it's it 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 it's just a waste of time if it can't get past uh, this high right in here. So 1292 is important. Um, a lot of us are in Baidu. Uh, Baidu still looks great. Uh, I'm still thinking Baidu gets into the 260. Uh, well, we'll say. Uh, 257.90 or above. We'll see what happens around that 260. It might be, it might need a little bit of a rest in that area. Uh, but from 260, if it can stabilize in that area, we're going to see something up in the 280 area, I suspect. So uh, those that have been in Baidu, you're doing very well. Uh, very, very, very nice. Um, uh, another one, uh, this XON. XON is coming from uh, one of my absolute favorite chart patterns there are, and that's the rounded bottom breakout. Uh, we, you can see that we've been down and then we're up. This right here was the rounded bottom breakout. Um, actually, you could call this a rounded bottom breakout, and then it failed, but the chart pattern over the, the, the candlestick pattern didn't fail. Um, the that rounded RBB rounded bottom breakout failed, but then it came back and it just blew through the 50 right in here, and um, I forget exactly what day this was one of our featured trade ideas, but just from right there up 20% uh, on it, and went right to target, pulled back, and now it's up through the 200 again, making a very nice J hook here. Uh, I'm kind of thinking that uh, X, XON wants to see that $30 area uh, uh, as it passes up through these highs. Uh, that's what I would kind of uh, kind of suspect here. Uh, let's see, really quick. Another one I saw tonight was this IO. IO. This is a uh, another rounded bottom breakout that became a rounded bottom breakout uh, today. And uh, I O. I'm going to measure this from the 50 because uh, where I like to buy these uh, are or is uh, in an inside day. So inside this area with the 50 as a stop, um, you know, this has got a 30% potential to the 200. And I, I'm not saying the 200; it won't go any further past that. But for this particular chart pattern and strategy. Uh, the 200 is the target direction, and that trade no longer is a rounded bottom breakout past that area. So that's where I'm going to call it as that's it. Uh, anything past that becomes a completely different trade. Uh, so IO is one, and then one, and then I'll quit. I'll quit looking at mine, and we'll take a look at some of yours. Is this SCOK? Uh, I think it really cleaned itself up very nice today. And uh, we want to watch that one for continued move up uh, and see if it can bust out through that 50-day simple moving average. Uh, that will be the key on this stock right here. It needs to take that out. Um, if it doesn't take it out this next run, and I'm not saying tomorrow, uh, give it a couple of days to get up there and work itself up. But if it doesn't take it out, then it, it might become a problem child, and we don't want that. So uh, if you're in it, 
you get up into here consider some profits you can always buy it back uh, take half maybe put a trailing stop on something like that uh, but SCOK uh, really really cleaned itself up very very nice today uh, from this uh, big old morning star uh, chart pattern here with a slight little pullback okay let's see maybe OPK does what uh, Exxon did OPK let's take a look uh, OPK oh it might yeah it, it might I mean r really all today was is a consolidation day I think OPK is a nice chart uh, we can come over here and uh, I think we need to draw draw a couple lines on here though I think we need to draw this line right here I think we need to draw that line and uh, we had a nice breakout uh, this is just consolidation over that area so right now I'd say OPK has a little higher to move um, uh, let's see I O. yeah that's right I O. it's off to work I go yeah you don't have to work too much when you uh, uh, are in stocks like those that take off let's see somebody asked about uh, Peabody Energy um, that's another very nice chart uh, it's not a rounded bottom breakout not yet uh, it's not an RBB it's close we certainly have our downtrend and then you can see price stalling how price has stalled that downtrend and how it's starting to flip or switch uh, change directions um, from this point you know just a just the fact we've got a nice bottom and we're up and a shallow pullback with a small candle today man this this to me sets it up for uh, a move higher so I think uh, BTU has uh, quite a bit of potential here I think we ought to look at this chart just just right here on our candlestick chart uh, low high high well we don't have a higher low we do have double bottom and now we're making a higher high so up back up great little little rounded bottom right there uh, candlestick rounded bottom Uh, where are we? Where are we? Uh, o R E X. O R E X. Uh, o R E X. We've got that uh, Doji continuation pattern. Many of you know it by a Doji sandwich. Terrific chart pattern, uh, and that's what that is—a continuation pattern. And let, let's 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 take that for a second. And you know, this is something I I I hear a lot in our trading room. Uh, and I talk to people and you know they they look at this chart they get into the chart uh, say today maybe or maybe they bought it maybe they bought it uh, down here and they kept it and they've kept it today and then all of a sudden that doji doesn't hold it actually starts pulling back a little bit and what happens what I see so many times is people start really panicking on this and you know what what you have to realize is a chart pattern it, it's like a it's like a child and it, it has to grow up it has to it it has to move to and fro um, it, it just doesn't you know it, it's not just hey we have a doji a big old gap up on some good volume it just doesn't happen like that and not not on a not enough times that you can you can control so we see things like this and then if it was to you know start doing this pullback then what happens is we get stopped out we get out of it we we get aggravated with ourselves and we move on and um, we never look at it again until it until until somebody somewhere points out hey did you guys see OREX this thing has gone up 60 percent and you go back and look at it and you think what did I do wrong and and I'll the what what happens or I'll, I'll just tell you what you did wrong <laughs> you just you're just not letting the chart work the the name of this chart pattern is a 
continuation pattern. Now we we can put all kinds of names with it we want. I certainly have clever names for different different chart patterns, but when you when you dig right down through it, it's a continuation pattern. Okay, if it's a continuation pattern, then let's let it continue. Let's let it continuation. <laughs> let it keep working. So if you come down here and you and you put you put a trend line wherever you want to put well not wherever you want to put it, but put it on, on I mean if you're if you're uh you know if you're an A personality you're gonna you're gonna put it on those lows right there. That's what you're gonna do. Uh, and that's okay. That's fine. If you're a little more little more kind of freewheeling, you're gonna put this thing up there and you're not you know, you're not gonna worry about those lows. Nobody's wrong where you put it, but you do need some idea of how this thing is gonna work. And if it starts pulling back I think of charts like this as an opportunity. Maybe, maybe we will. We better change that candle a little bit. Uh, let's 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 make them a little smaller. There we go. So I look at. I'm looking for an opportunity here when this thing moves back and those candles start getting smaller. Then what I want to do is start looking for a bullish candle. All I need is one bullish candle with a low. That's all. Now what happens is that becomes where I'm going to trade from right there. And then from there, I don't really care whether this thing moves sideways from now to, well, to whenever. As uh, long as it holds that, I'll stay with it in anticipation that that trend, what started here, continues. Notice what we just drew here. Uh, we have a cup. And what do we know about big rallies? They're going to pull back, aren't they? And they're going to make candles. Now, I'm, I, I, I said they're going to make candles. That's because I'm under the assumption this is going to be bullish. Now, there's no guarantee it's going to be. But that's the chart pattern that will, it will produce if, if everything works out right here. And then once it starts moving up, once it starts moving up, I guarantee this, this pullback will happen. And it, where this comes from is, is understanding a very simple chart pattern, cup and handle, very simple chart pattern. Uh, once you understand it and you know what to anticipate, then you can foresee what's happening as it builds. But I'm, I'm, I'm digressing big time here and I apologize. Uh, bottom line with this chart, this is an opportunity chart to be in. And, uh, you know, you just have to be there at the right time. If you pay too high, if you pay too high for it and it pulls back, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be hurting. You're gonna be in a world of hurt, and you're you're probably gonna be pretty mad at yourself. Heck, that's a 13, 14 percent um, uh, pullback. But it's the problem is not with the chart. The problem is with maybe the entry, not with the chart. Okay, <clears throat> one second. Uh, Steve is pointing out um, SR, and, and that's a stock I, I know I'm still in, and I, I think Steve's still in it. And uh, uh, that's a beautiful chart uh, right there. Now, I, I will admit tomorrow I will take profits on it uh, if, it, if uh, uh, it shows any signs of weakness. Um, uh, in, in fact, yeah, in, in, in fact, I may end up closing it tomorrow just because uh, I think a lot of people know I'm not going to I'm going to be in and out Thursday and Friday. Uh, so I may just sell it to take those profits. But then I've got 15, a little over 15 percent profit in it now. Um, and I'm, I probably won't wait for that sell signal here. And uh, I, you know, e even if even if this candlestick was green, uh, I might take those profits. And why would I take those profits? Because if it did something like that, it'd probably be close to 20%. And that's my answer. Why would I take it? Because I have 20%. Simple as that. And that converts to folding money. Uh, so, you know, it's all about taking those profits. Um, and then, uh, let's see, Rod Jones is saying, what about a, a pullback for an entry? I assume you're talking about that O-R, what was it, O-R-E-X? I assume you're talking about that, and definitely I would agree. 
um, if if I was to if I was to have entered this today, it would one it would not have been with a full position. It would have been with about a quarter of a position, and with a quarter of a position, I really don't care what it does from that point. Uh, if it wants to pull back, it's like okay, you know what? That's just going to give me a, a another opportunity or a better opportunity. So let it pull back by another quarter. Uh, now that 50-day moving average, I'm going to get nervous if it gets below it. Although that's my trend line, I will start to get nervous below that 50. Um, and I, I, I might or might not blindly add if it starts moving down. But if it does go below the 50 and it moves lower, now what I would do is become, and at this point I would have, say, half a position. So at this point I would become a little bit smarter now. I would say, okay, I've already got half a position. I have lowered my price from the original buy, but now I'm going to wait for an absolute buy signal or an absolute uh, bottom. Uh, let me as absolute as we can possibly be. Okay, there's no guarantee, and I don't necessarily need some candlestick buy signal like a bullish engulf or piercing candle or morning star. I don't need anything quite like that. I would just be happy with with uh, with uh, some buyers coming in and starting to turn that chart like that and that's where I might add to it then I'd have three quarters and then I would add to it moving up having a full position in my average cost oh my average cost would be about right oh that's too high uh, my average cost would probably be about right in here which you know the other thing to do is just simply wait till you see a buy signal <laughs> you know that that's another thing you don't have to buy it on today's doji. Uh, there was no buy signal here today, not even intraday, uh, because intraday the candle's not finished, so you can't talk about it. You have to look at an intraday chart, and we're looking at a daily chart. So there was no buy signal on this today. And what commonly happens after a big stick day? We get some consolidation. So what happens tomorrow? Uh, if it starts moving up, if I start seeing this move up over this doji and and we are low is higher than yesterday's low, then what I will do is go in there and buy that and that low will be my would be my low. Case in point RPRX RPRX uh, I bought we, we were in this the, the other day thanks to one of the members in the trading room. Uh, made great money. We got in very early on this gap up. Great money. Sold it. Yes, a day trade. Uh, but if it wants to hand you that kind of uh, those kind of profits there, uh, somewhere in the tune of 20% or so, um, I'll take that in one day, any day. So we have a doji. The next day, we establish a low. Great candle. Nice chart. Okay, we're ready. Now we have this candle in here, and notice how that low was higher than this low so what happens is we've now got a low established now that is where I'm gonna trade from so from that low I'm looking to trade that up current my my cost is 9.13 so 9.13 right in here I caught it today uh, right there just just about at the the uh, that lower line there the lower part of the doji uh, so right in that area. So I, f I feel that's a good entry and that's a good stop area right there. So this is this is a real life example of that OREX uh, on the way I would do it. Okay, um, let's see here. Sorry, sometimes I tend to spend way too much time on one stock. Uh, I, I feel it's better to... Sp I do, I, I truly do feel it's better to spend more time uh, on one trade looking at it than looking at uh, 1500 trades a night when we really can't talk about any one particular trade. Uh, let's see. Let's go look at, take a look at that TUMI. And I realize I'm way behind. Uh, TUMI. Uh, TUMI has one of my favorite, not, no, let me, let me rephrase that. It has my favorite candlestick uh, single signal single signal um, and that's the belt hold 
the belt hold I think is is the the uh, strongest uh, the most reliable candlestick signal there is and even over a bull kicker um, I think a, a belt hold is stronger and uh, just my opinion and what I have found is belt holds do not produce as fast as a bull kicker I, I'll say that but I think they have a better batting average and um, belt holds more times than not will give you an opportunity to get in a better opportunity more times than not I'll see them pull back and then start moving up in this case that belt hold uh, was put in and then we have a nice little inside day the following day and it's showing strength on up so right now if you were to just connect those lows we're looking at something like that now I'm not sure that is going to happen because like I said belt holds tends to be a little slower but I think they tend to be a little more um, in the long run they end up producing a little bit better uh, so because of that right there and because we have a low high higher low uh, or double bottom and uh, double bottoms and higher lows they have the same kind of uh, mechanism for me um, so you, you may hear me call this a double bottom which I think that is a double bottom is there a little gap in there yes it is but let's not shoot the messenger um, you know let's realize that that uh, there are uh, 1.4 million shares traded on this today so you know 1.4 million shares so they couldn't get it all the way down to the low you know let's let's not send everyone to jail because of that uh, they came awfully close they tossed us a bell told they tossed us some follow-through what a great chart pattern on this uh, T I T U T U M I uh, thank you Steve Steve's put a couple let's go look at a couple of those uh, G D O T try that again G D O T uh, G D O T low high a nice little pullback L notice that higher low notice the hammer type candles I say type because that's not a hammer uh, these are our are, are hammers uh, this is showing the buyers are starting to step in and push the sellers out nice doji man on positive trading over the 20 and the t-line I think you've got a winner there and um, let's go look at that NYT we'll go look at a few more uh, here's in white <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> I'm still fighting a cold <laughs> uh, <clears throat> NYT uh, we've rallied we've we've we you can see we've rallied from this point here by the way that's a rounded bottom breakout a failure here and then back in that rounded bottom breakout uh, ran up 11 and a half 11 percent has pulled back nasty nasty pullback probably scared somebody uh, but you can see how it's starting to turn already already starting to turn um, that's a nice chart in YT alrighty let's uh, Gary's got a couple there ACRX uh, ACRX I would be a buyer on any positive trading over the 50 uh, I know that you'll hear a lot of a lot of people say you want to be a positive you want to be a trader on positive trading uh, above uh, say yesterday's candle well you know if you always want to buy retail I agree uh, I have no problem with doing that I don't have any at all um, I would just prefer to buy retail or I'm sorry wholesale so and I want to buy <coughs> excuse me as much wholesale as possible so what I'm gonna do is say I'm willing to buy it um, right in this level here above the 50 is what I'm looking for uh, above the 20 above the 50 so uh, could I buy it a little more wholesale buy it down here well I don't I think the trade kinda has no follow through down here over the 20 and the 50 I think it has follow through uh, also I, I probably need to point out that is a, a really nice scoop pattern by the way um, and there's our doji continuation pattern uh, working right there so you know 
we it, it's it here's another one of these things I find with uh, uh, people I I do a lot of coaching uh, and people I coach and people that call me up and and you know they want to ask questions talk about a chart uh, here's what I find happens is uh, Gary I'm gonna pick on you just for a second because this is your stock okay uh, Gary is posting it tonight, and Gary's posting it because he likes it. You know, he, he likes it. Um, I like it too. So if you like it tonight, again, I'm just picking on Gary because it's his stock. Uh, but if Gary likes it tonight, and if it was to do this tomorrow, right there, Gary might, Gary might say, man. I don't like that chart anymore. My my statement would be why? Or my question would be why? What does this candle have to do with that chart pattern? And and this is where uh I, I kind of alluded to it a little earlier. You know, we've got to let it work. I think somebody wrote uh in here I saw in the chat, you know, breathe. You have to let it breathe. Um, you know, charts. As much as we would, we, <laughs> as much as we want charts to do this, believe me, we all do. They don't. Uh, they just don't do that. And uh, or or the ones that do, they're they're far enough few between that that um, we just might not always be there to catch them. But we might be here to catch this type of chart quite often. So, so Gary likes the chart tonight, so it puts in a, a, a little little candle like this. Gary gets a little nervous, and he can't stand the heat, so he closes it out. Done. Uh, the next day, it does this right here. Okay. So Gary's kicking himself. What did I do wrong? Simply did not let that chart work. Give it some room. Give it some air. What chart pattern is this right here? This is 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 this is not a doji, okay? I realize that, but that is a continuation pattern. It doesn't have to be a doji. It can be, uh, you know, it can be a Hiromi candle in there, uh, but that's a continuation pattern. And just a simple consolidation, as long as it's, as long as it's over the reason you like it. Now I know this chart pattern. I've seen Gary post here before. I know why he likes it. Uh, you know, he, he he certainly may see the the uh, scoop pattern. There we go. He certainly may see the scoop pattern, but because it's breaking over the big three, the 20, the 34, and the 50, that's one reason he's liking it. So where would you dislike the chart? That's simple. If it broke and closed, that's important. Broke and closed below the big three if it broke and closed below where you liked it so that's just again I do apologize I get a little little sometimes I get off too much on one chart all right let's look one more uh, oh, Gary's we'll take two uh, GILD <clears throat> uh, GILD is setting up for a nice little J hook pattern uh, I like the the bottoming here I like that that chart pattern uh, there's one thing about GILD though, uh, it has got to hold, uh, say 106.13, right in here. It has to hold this low, and the reason it has to, uh, and I, I mean no if ands or buts. If you're going to put a put a stop in there, I'd put that stop pretty darn tight. If you're going to get stopped out, let yourself get stopped out. And the reason is, uh, we have to start with that candle right there. Uh, that's a pretty healthy dark cloud cover, very healthy. Uh, we do have a follow-through candle with a doji continuation pattern. But wait, we have support on the 50. We have a doji here. We have stocks moving. Or we have this chart moving sideways. That looks like it's bottoming and like it's going to curl up and move up. All right, let's look at the chart in a different way. Let's just look at it with this chart pattern right here. No 50-day moving average. It's just a blue line is all it is. Now, let's let's put some of our things back up there. Let's point out the dark cloud cover. Let's point out 
<laughs> sorry about this let's point out the follow-through let's point out the doji continuation now what pattern do we have now price rules no matter what what pattern is price action making right now that's a bear flag so if if you're going to trade GILD it must hold these lows right here uh, like I said stop don't be afraid to be stopped out okay QTWO QTWO um, one thing I want to check here is let's go look at some overall volume um, what I'm I'll talk about this chart I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this chart but one thing I want to caution you on is the volume okay uh, be very very careful um, I personally don't think I would trade it uh, unless I could be in front of my computer and then I might um, uh, and it's only because the the lack of volume over here all the volume is recently definitely now now let's talk about the chart no volume whatsoever to do with it let's talk about the chart I love it I love that chart I love this type of chart pattern um, great consolidation big big old pop to the upside there's some buyers in there this to me is just profit taking I would have a I would look for that buy signal which might be today you may have your low established so any kind of a buy on an inside day tomorrow I think would be sweet use that low as a stop maybe the t-line um, yeah because the t-line will probably be up there tomorrow to tell you the truth uh, so you can use a t-line of that low um, uh, so very nice chart just be extremely cautious of the volume and let's see IRDM IRDM hey before it gets too long here uh, again I want to thank everybody for being here uh, I do appreciate it uh, members great big thank you to do thanks for all the work you do in the room uh, the guest here uh, thanks for putting up with my my uh, oh I get carried away sometimes <laughs> I know okay uh, we have a nice little bull run we have a t-line run we have a pullback uh, as long as it holds above the t-line I would say IRDM is still good I want to look at that weekly uh, just to see what's over here uh, you can see some of the targets it needs to take out first thing is say 1050 and then we'll look at something around 1115 or so uh, something like that um, CKB CBK we'll get it right CBK CBK let me check something here uh, CBK it's not quite a pinball setup it might have been over here uh, yeah it might have been a pinball setup here it's right on that edge of maybe maybe not great little rounded bottom we're back over the T line back over the 20 if I was long I would just want my stop say below the 20 someplace you might take your stop all the way to 615 I'd probably keep it a little tighter uh, this to me looks like it's headed up uh, probably to the deuce the 200 and that's a 12 percent move a continued move to the 20 give you a 20 percent move how can you argue with those profits pretty nice uh, pretty nice chart right there um, RDEN RDEN another belt hold another belt hold a double bottom belt hold a belt hold with a doji continuation pattern above the big three T line run if you're long I would stay long if you're looking to buy it well you can buy it up here or you can buy it on a pullback either place I think the I think what what you know the uh, the thing about this chart is I look at it and I want to tell myself I want to be happily involved with this chart I see potential uh, 15 maybe 20 percent uh, I see that potential so I want to be happily involved I may not be so hungry to rush into it uh, but I might want a tiny piece of it for a pullback and then start adding to it of course you can always just simply wait for the pullback too 
Um, in Q. Uh, in Q. In Q is trying to set up, but I think over the, the 20 is what we need to see. Uh, we need to talk really quickly about how bottoms are formed. There are only two ways bottoms are formed, in my opinion. Now, you can see all sorts of configurations in a bottom, but there's two, two things that stand out, and probably that's what I should say. There are two things that stand out in all bottoms. So I guess, I guess that's where I get. There's only two ways a bottom can be formed. One is this right here, a rounded bottom. But the next thing I'm about to show you is in all rounded bottoms and is in all bottoms. We've started, we've, we've established a bottom based on what we see here. We've established a low, I should say, based on what we see here. Now that it's moving up, what we need to see is a pullback. We need to see a pullback to where we have a low, let me change the colors here, there we go, where we have a low to a high to a higher low to a higher high, right there. So even a rounded bottom, you're going to see a, uh, a pullback. So you'll see a low, high, higher low. When it breaks out of this high, there's where our buy point is. Now, I, we're traders. I know that. So we all want to be in on this move down here, or we want to be in down here. I'm just pointing out what you need to see. That's all. Uh, so when you see those rounded bottoms, and if you, ke if you find that you, you buy them, and you find that you have very little success after a couple of days because it pulls back, and you find yourself getting upset with yourself or upset with the chart or upset with something, and you just, you know, you want to run out and kick your dog, slam the door, that sort of thing, just stop for a moment and think about it. This is what's happening. A low to a high, higher low, then up. There's the buy point as it breaks out of that high. And I'm, you know, I don't know if that's going to be the high. I don't know that. Not, not yet. I'm just, I can only guess from the on the future off today's candle so I'm, I'm not saying tomorrow we're gonna to start moving down I'm just saying the chart pattern will always have a low high higher low setup in it and then the breakout that sets it up for moving higher so like I say don't 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 slam the door don't kick the dog just realize what charts always do good rule of thumb there um and that was in Q. Let's come over here to ARWR. ARWR. Um ARWR. I'm gonna have to Yep. Just a second. I gotta write that one down. ARWR. Nice chart. Uh pinball setup. This is uh, one of our uh, what I call a, a pinball setup. Clever name for buying a chart off the bottom is what it is. Um, we're down the buyers start coming in here uh, we pull back we have a double bottom we have a little what I call a reverse scoop scoop here there's the handle um, we've actually moved down a little bit and now we're moving over the T line what what really excites me is there's about 30 almost 30 percent we'll call it 27 percent to the 34 EMA on the pinball setup the 34 is always the target you don't have to sell it there. That certainly can fit within your own rules. Uh, if you follow the pinball setup, it says to sell it there. And it says to maybe take half off and put a trailing stop on, something like that. But at least take 50%. Great little chart here. Thank you for this one, David. Appreciate it. Uh, this one has a very big chance of being on our watch list tomorrow right here. So I'd be a buyer on any trading tomorrow over the T-line. And I'll get real excited over the 20. Uh, and then by pinball rules, uh, I would be stopped out on a close below the T-line. On a close below the T-line. Thank you for that one. Uh, SPEX, I think there's a few people in the uh, trading room that's long this. And uh, 
Uh, I think we're doing pretty well on it. Um, I I would be long this. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm long, so just so you know. Uh, but so far we've got a nice little J hook uh, building right in here. Um, on a breakout, I would have to say we're going to see something up here in the dollar, say 58, 60 area, and then from there we'll see something up uh, in the dollar 72 area. Uh, is it going to make it to the 200? It might, but you need to follow the chart up there. It might be a little far up there to make it in one big jump or you know a couple of days. So it may take a little pullback or two to get up there, but I think right now that chart's looking pretty darn good. Uh, G and W, ouch. Okay, so G and W. There's two things that I want to look at at this chart. First, I have to ask myself, are you in it? Which I don't know. Uh, or are you looking to buy it? In either case, my stop would be no less than a penny below that low right in here. Um, I you, you'll you'll probably find if you know anything about me, I'm not big on buying this type of chart. I'm not big on it at all, uh, but if I was buying it, like I say, my stop would be down at this little level right in here. Uh, I would consider buying on a breakout of that doji right there. Uh, I would consider that, uh, but I would be very limited on profits uh, up to the T-line maybe. Uh, once again, I want to point out how bottoms are formed. So if we started to, let's, let's say tomorrow is the big day, okay? Well, no, let's let's do something like this. So let's say you bought it tomorrow. Maybe you bought it today, and it starts moving up. We get to the T-line. Uh, okay, we can go past the T-line, but somewhere up in here, I'm going to look at taking profits. But there's no sell signal, so why take profits? Man, I think this stock is going to keep moving higher, so why take profits right there? Well, here's why. Because all... Here's a little, uh, here's a gym for you. Uh, when you go look at charts tonight, go look at hundreds of charts <laughs> tonight. And don't look at what price is doing right now. Try to avoid that. Also, try to avoid looking at stocks, looking for stocks that you want to put on your watch list. Try to avoid that. Look for stocks that have create, that have gapped down, put in a bottom, and then watch what they do. They move up and then they move back. Why? Because that's how bottoms are formed. Bottom, bottoms have to have, have construction. And construction is low, high, higher, low. It certainly doesn't have to be that steep. It doesn't have to go from here to here. It can be much smaller. Uh, but you'll find there's a pullback. So what happens is you buy it, it moves up, you're giddy, you make money but you don't sell it, it pulls back, now you're mad at yourself, you end up selling it here, and the next few days it moves up, it breaks out of this high, and then it runs up here, and you're thinking, stock trading sucks. Stock trading is easy. We just have to realize what chart patterns do. And, and another thing too, is you have to realize that if you see it, so does everybody else. Remember that. If you see it, so does everyone else. Believe me, nobody is the only person that sees something. Uh, so what you're doing is you're 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 watching a chart and you're trading with everybody else in mind, and you're saying, you know what? I know this is going to pull back, so I'm going to take my money up here. I'll let it pull back. I'll buy these lows, and then I'll trade it up here again. Maybe add to on that breakout, and you work that as planned. You're a smart person right there. Nice chart. Nice chart if you follow the rules, uh, but remember we have to have that that low high higher low in the bottom. Thank you for that one. Uh, let's see here. Is the red dotted line the 200? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, Baba, Baba. Well, you know, uh, Baba's still moving up. Uh, Baba's just in some profit taking because it got a little ahead of itself. Uh, I think Baba is still trending up. I don't think the trend has broken yet. Uh, the trend I'm, I'm looking at is the T-line. That's what's in front of me right here. Uh, we can draw lines to her blue in the face. We're going to come up with about the same thing. Uh, we can, you know, 
you do it up there if you want but but then again if you're going to use today's low then you probably should have used yesterday's low uh, which means now it's in a downtrend if that's how you're going to draw lines uh, I tend to follow that T line uh, it has not failed me uh, usually uh, I where, where it fails is not the T line it's me trying to outthink it uh, is usually what fails so I look at this and I think it's still in a trend this is just a a pullback profit taking pullback uh, at this point uh, what I would do if I was if I was long um, you know maybe it should have took profits today or maybe the fact that it's been up a ridiculous amount in the last four or five days uh, like 18 percent maybe that's a good reason to take profits uh, let it pull back wait for another buy signal and look to buy it again uh, anything below the T line the next logical place it's going to come down to is that candle there that represents 106.50. If it fails there, the next logical place it's going to come down to uh, is about 101, which I'm, what I was looking at is this doji right in here, which you'll probably get a magnet pull right to the 20. So that's my BABA, my BABA plan. Um, let's see, VS. V V Z, excuse me. Uh, v Z right now is just uh, moving sideways. Although I really don't particularly like those candlesticks, um, it is chart pattern wise. It is moving up. We have a low, high. Note the higher low, low, high, higher low, breakout. We've rallied. We're just moving sideways, consolidating. Uh, maybe be long on a breakout. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna ref I'm gonna redo that. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is draw. Let's draw a line across those tops like that, and then let's draw a line just underneath the 20. I'm sorry, the T line, and I'm gonna start right here, just underneath it, and I'm gonna try to, you know, I, I want to get just underneath, pretty much where today is, and then I'm gonna extend it up, right there, like that. Anything in this area. I think we're good to go. I think we're all right. Anything below, that would tell you that the bears are starting to uh, put a little pressure. And anything uh, out that top would tell you that the bulls are moving this higher. And this is a nice little wave one, one, two, three uh, type move right there. So anywhere in that area, I think we're safe. Below, not so good. Or maybe a short and then out the top would be bullish. Uh, TRMR, <clears throat> I'd be a buyer on, uh, uh, let's put the buy box on this here. Buy box. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use the body. I like the bodies of the candles more than wicks. So I want to be a buyer in this. I want to be happily involved with this, involved with this chart. Uh, I look at this chart, what do I see? I, I see a chart that's been in a downtrend. I see a chart that's starting to flatten out or uh, price start to stall a little bit. Um, I see a low, a high, a higher low right here. Low, high, higher low. I see a very nice gap uh, over the uh, 50 uh, on good volume. So what does that tell me? That tells me that, you know, this chart just might want to run up here like that. So I want to be happily involved. Uh, entry. I just want to be in this area here. You know, let's let's think about this. If you uh, if if you think we're going to move to the uh, 200, uh, that's 50 percent. So that's 50 percent. So what difference would it make if you may if you bought somewhere uh, in this level here? If you could negotiate a price now. Uh, even if you bought a small portion at this very high and it pulled back you you could add to it so you'd lower your cost so realistically we come back we fill the gap you know you know if it pulls back uh, you could see 50 percent if you waited uh, if you had an average price of we'll split the middle split the difference there uh, you might see 40 40 percent 45 percent very nice chart thank you I'm writing this one down by the way uh, TR MR, I'm going to have to follow that one. Sweet chart. David, wow, that's two for you. 
Nice job. Uh, very nice chart. I'd, I'd love to be happily involved with this anywhere in this area. Watch for that deuce up there to get tagged or awfully close to it. Uh, let's see, DRH, DRH. Uh, DRH so far just a little pullback PBO uh, PBO's pullback opportunity um, nice double bottom nice rally T line the big trick is here is it's gonna have to hold those lows that that's the big trick uh, I, ha I have to pay respect to that big bear bearish engulf there uh, the fact is we've had follow-through and uh, um, more more than I'm worried about the up move, I'd be more worried about the down move. I'm not saying it's going to move down. I'm just saying I would want my stop pretty tight, uh, you know, on those lows right there. Long as it can hold up and start working itself up, we may be good to go there. But it really needs to hold those lows. And the money is on the breakout. The money is not from here to here. That's only 2%, 2.5%. The money's on the breakout, um, you know, something up here. So uh, watch those lows. You really, really got to protect that that low there. Um, Holex. Man, GE, I know what you like. I already know what kind of... Uh, I, I know what David likes and I know what GE likes. Uh, uh, once again, uh, the big trick is going to be to hold that low, although I like that candlestick much better, uh, but I cannot turn my head and not pay attention to what we have here. Uh, we currently have a bearish engulf with follow through. So what we need to see now is a reversal pattern. and. Uh, I'm not sure that reversal pattern is in yet. Um, we do have a little bullish in golf. We have a little doji, so we could have a continuation pattern forming, but we need to see it form. We need to see, <coughs> excuse me, we need to see follow through. Um, I would say over over these two two highs right here, so over 26.76, right there. I I. I love this chart pattern. I really like what you're what you're pulling out here, but try to find them without these ugly, ugly bearish engulfs up here. Um, that that kind of spooks me just a little bit. But I love that pattern right there. Uh, let's see if I can find you a couple. Now um, yeah, that might be close. Uh, let's try NTRI. Um, here we go. NTRI up nice consolidation right there no signs of bulls or bears at all nothing but bull signs good flagging right in there um, well BIDU is on my uh, scan here but that's up a little higher than what you were looking at uh, how about TEG uh, here's one maybe TEG nice move up here's our pullback no harsh bear signals uh, that might be one um, you know what let's try these I sorry I realize I'm getting off off track here uh, let's take a look at there we go uh, see how we're up um, we've we're actually coming up now to where if there was any concern on this candle we are now taking this out uh, with today's candle um, we'll, we'll try one more and then I'll leave it alone uh, here's another one, uh, MET. That might be uh, something you're looking at right there. I pulled those off. That's the last few stocks that came up on the scanner as the market closed, uh, looking for those uh, trend buys with pullbacks. Uh, let's Steve. I know. Oh, okay. We already talked about that. Uh, what about waiting for the pull? Yep. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Where are we? Crocs, 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 Crocs. Is an RBB wannabe? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, terrific double bottom right here. Um, 
terrific double bottom. We've got a doji gap up consolidation. I'd be a buyer on this over that 1283, which is over the 50, which would make it a rounded bottom breakout. Um, very nice chart, Crocs. What would be a good entry strategy? Maybe just buy a few shares and watch. Well, um, I'm not sure which stock we're, we're talking about, uh, Rob. You know what? I think we talked about this, didn't we? Now I recognize this. So I think we did that. Uh, Baba on a pullback. We already talked about that. Uh, ACHN. Uh, ACHN, I, I think this is a nice chart. I think it's working out very well. Uh, I think this is just a bit of consolidation day. Uh, I would look to be involved with this chart. Anything over that 50 area, you know, the, this, this big clump of moving averages. It's what I call the big three, the 20 simple, the 34 EMA, the 50 simple, uh, the big three. So any kind of pullback, I would look at this. I think we have a nice gap up, uh, a great... Uh, uh, dynamic vote on this chart that says up we go. Uh, OREX ha had earnings yesterday. Thanks, Gary. Uh, does a bell total always mean there was higher volume? Hmm. I, I would venture to bet that most bell tolls, if not all, have greater volume than you'll see normally. I would, but but I'm not sure that a, that we have. To, let's see. Does the bell toll mean there was higher volume? Um, not necessarily, but I would bet it works out that way, because it takes. There's a lot of volume in the stock when it gaps down and moves back up. I I would say offhand that. There's, there's a fair amount of volume, and it's usually higher than normal. I would say that, yes. I've never really looked at it to see that, hey, all bell holes have uh, more volume. Uh, TL, 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 TL. That can't be it. Uh, TL. I got nothing on TL. I got nothing on TL, Rod. Uh, MTW, MTW, MTW. Uh, yeah, if it can move over the 50, still has a little bit to go, but that would be uh, that would be rounded bottom breakout material there. Rate, I've got rate written down. It was one of the stocks I wanted to mention tonight. Thanks, Nigel. Beautiful chart. I think this is a great chart for tomorrow. Uh, rate, that's a beautiful rounded bottom breakout. Uh, I may be all over this one tomorrow. Sweet chart. Uh, down. We price is stalling and turning and flipping and switching and here we're up big big candle yesterday uh, doji hammer type candle uh, bullish engulf great follow through today uh, terrific chart thanks Nigel uh, but it is always takes so long to work I'm not sure what that is patience and discipline yeah that's one of the hardest things as trading goes uh, <laughs> patients belong in a hospital. Give me something to trade. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks, Jim. Jim posted bear flag on that. I forgot what the chart was, but I remember which one we were talking about. Uh, I'm going through some of these here. Um... Thanks, Gary. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, Michael. Thanks for being here. Hey, yeah, you know, um, maybe if somebody could draw me a line down below. Uh, I'm going to have to cut this off a little bit here. Uh, did did Rex improve itself? Uh, I think it did. I, I actually added more shares uh, today uh, to Rex. Um you know, let's look at this chart on Rex and what's the chart doing? Uh, you know, yesterday it didn't do so hot for the day, but it, but is that why you're buying it? And I, I guess, let's see, let's let's go back to yesterday. Did yesterday change the chart? And we were really looking at the chart the day before. 
Um, now, so let's take the day before and let's move this down like that. Like that. So, there we go, close. So, starting with this candle here, let's take a look at this chart and see what we have. We have a definite downtrend. Uh, all of a sudden, we have a, um, I can't tell if that's a bullish engulf or not, but close. Uh, but it's a good candle anyway. It rallies up and it fails. Okay, so that, that that's a failed setup right there. So down we go, but notice this down move, how the candlesticks get all small. Nothing, nothing dramatic. Think of a candlestick as a vote, okay? Uh, and to keep it into numbers we can grasp, let's think of it as there's only 100 votes. That's it, 100. Doesn't matter how many shares is traded in this chart, just let's think of it as 100. And now let's think of votes. So if this look at all these candle here these votes to the downside these are some good votes right here the trend is down uh, it the votes are up and now the votes went absolutely the other way but they went weak they're not strong not only that look how it starts moving sideways and then we get a hammer in there now why is that called a hammer um, you've probably heard it called a hammer and then you've probably heard it called it hammers in the bottom okay I can go for that I think that so let's think about what a hammer actually does a hammer hits nails nails goes in the two by four I don't know of too many people that can hit that nail one time and make it go in so you have to hit the nail several times right hammer 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 hammering in the bottom hammer 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 we put a piercing candle in now another hammer hammer some more bottom so when I look at this chart I'm seeing a bottom start to be starting to be created there's bo bottom starting to 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 form here so I like this chart because of this okay so let's move into the day before yesterday what does yesterday's candle have to do with this chart pattern. The only thing I can say is it's part of the hammering in the bottom. I don't see anything bearish about this candle. If that's bearish, well, so is that. If that's bearish, so is that. If that's bearish, so is that. <laughs> so there's nothing bearish about this candle right now. Nothing at all. It's part of that bottoming formation. Now I know there's several people in the trading room uh, that that are in this. I'm in this. Uh, I know several people that are say unhappy with the chart because they're in it and it's moving down. Um, it's part of that bottoming creation, creating a bottom here. Uh, so today, what did we do? We put in a bullish Haromi. Are we a higher low than these here? Yes. Are we up? So we're low, high, higher, low. Could we have a bottom, uh, you know, just a bottom right there forming? So now, what does this candle have to do with this chart pattern? Not a doggone thing. Just more formation of a bottom. That's all it is. So I guess that that's a really long answer to a very simple question you asked. Did it, did it improve itself? I think that was a question. Yes, it did. Uh, is it still forming a bottom? Yes, it is. Uh, does it guarantee it's going to be bullish? No. But I do think it is still trying to form that bottom. If we start breaking below these lows right here, then we could have more downside, and you need to have a stop in there at that level. Okay, so couldn't get into now. We'll, yes, this is being recorded, yes. Uh, you're welcome, Pat. Thanks for being here. appreciate it. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate that. Uh, CH, <clears throat> CHK. Let's go over here. Yep. Nice rounded bottom breakout. <clears throat> With about 15% to the 200 as well.
Let's see what we have here. Oh, thanks, Linda. Appreciate it. Uh, VHC. Did we already get that one? Uh, VHC. This, this one. This one's causing some grief for a few of us. Uh, RBB equals VHC uh, with small pullback. No, this is this is not an RBB pattern. Uh, it never was an RBB pattern. Uh, RBB is when it, it has to get back above the 50 here. So this was not this. Uh, this might have been a pinball setup at some point. Yeah, uh, but it's starting to fail here now. Um, you, we we need to be very careful with this. Now, with that, let's let's go over here, and let's think about it. Let's put a big old line up here. So, are we still forming a bottom? Could be. Uh, the big the big sixty four thousand dollar question are is are is. Uh, are we willing to carry it down another 20% all the way to that low? That's a bit far, so we might want to get stopped out of it. We might not want to play with it, but in the big picture, um, is this just simply part of a bottom formation? That's all that is, uh, and I think this is part of it. The, like I said, the question is, do you want to play with 20% more downside? And that's where you have to make those decisions. Um, do, 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 Kate, Kate, take a look at some Kate, 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 oh, that's just darn right pretty right there, uh, bull kicker, yowzer, beautiful chart, terrific pullback opportunity here, that's an excellent chart, I'm going to write that one down, Kate, thank you, Steve, she's a pretty one. <laughs> not like uh, what's her name you guys know I'm th I can't think of her name <laughs> I'm getting old late night um, where am I Uh, Howard, A C H N. I think we we talked, we looked at that one a few minutes ago. I still think this is bullish myself. Uh, a nice little gap up. We have a cradle pattern right here. Nice little cradle pattern. Uh, a little pullback would be nice for for me anyway. I'd like to I'd like to grab the entry in there and then uh, watch this move up. I still think it's a very nice chart. Uh, can't this go down? Uh, anymore if it hits the hits the TA Rob can't this go down anymore if it hits the TL is TL trend line and I don't know which one you're talking about uh, D yes the T line is the 8 exponential moving average um, I'm using TC 2000 and it offers um, the T line, uh, the the configuration I'm using is high plus low plus close divided by three. You know the reality is you don't have to do that. Uh, you could just use uh, probably last price is what I would use. Some programs aren't going to have that. Uh, that's not a deal breaker. I would just use last price. That'll get you awfully close and in the ballpark. And that that would work just fine. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Kate versus Angie. <laughs> We're going to take Kate today. <laughs> uh, let's see. URA. Uh, URA. U URA is probably looking at some profit taking right now. That's all. Uh, very nice little chart pattern. Uh, double bottom. Great move up. I would wait for a better offering, though. I would let it. I would let it consolidate a little more. Uh, I'm not convinced this is the end of it. Um, one thing is, in in three days, this thing's been up 20%. So, I, I just I just I just feel it, it's going to need some more consolidation, and that might offer a better entry as well. Um, 
So I, I would wait uh, on a, 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 a better time uh, to buy this on a pullback. I would definitely put it on my watch list. Beautiful chart. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is... Okay. Rob, you must be having a conversation with somebody else because I... I I don't know which one you're talking about. Um, look at ego, 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 uh, ego. Great little scoop pattern there. Uh, I'd be a buyer on ego, and yeah, we've got a nice little pinball set up here. So nice, nice run to the to the uh, 20 or 15. <laughs> I'll get it in a minute. The 34, just above the 20, right there. Uh, we'll give you about 15% on that. Uh, but it must stay above the T-line. Notice how the chart pattern has made a low, a high, a higher low. Uh, looking good here for about a 15% move. May go higher, but let's take one step at a time. Uh, MBII. Whoops, too many eyes. That's good. Whoa. I'm writing that one down. Wait a minute. Uh, this one, the volume is kind of, might be kind of thin out there. Uh, yeah, it might be kind of thin. You, we want to watch that. Uh, but chart pattern, what a nice rounded bottom breakout. Uh, very nice. We just, you know, it great. I mean, the volume is okay today, but, uh, you know, I, I look back at this history uh, I'm not overwhelmed with the volume. So the chances of me trading this are slim to none. But what a nice chart pattern. Thank you very much, Steve and Gigi. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, I'll get this recording going. It won't be out till sometime around noon tomorrow. Uh, you can find it on the website. Um, under the tab training and then start stock chat archives I'll have it there so again thank you very much everyone for coming uh, tonight um, I'm gonna turn the thing off now here